Is this episode gonna be on Netflix? <laughs> Hopefully. Fingers crossed, somebody buy it. So now, we're gonna create a study. Episode 1. So yesterday, I did some tactics. Who's Laurex? It's me. Okay, so yeah, yesterday I did some tactics, so I'm gonna try to find some good ones. I will be showing you tactics and you're gonna be solving it, okay? Uh, let me just start with the easiest one. Let me find the easiest one. Ah, here we go. I'm gonna be very slow. I'm, we're not gonna be doing too, too hard, but it's good for you. So if you're gonna be learning, I'm gonna tell you in details what's gonna be going on. I mean, first one is really easy, so we're gonna start from easy and go to, to a tougher ones for sure. But what I want to say is how to improve your chess quickly, as quickly as you can. So obviously as a chess player or just chess enthusiast, you're struggling because you're working on chess, you're playing, you're doing everything, but you're not improving, right? And this is a struggle of every chess player, not on every level. Because whenever you, know, you want to just improve, be, be fast, be quick, like be the best as soon as you can, and yeah, in chess it doesn't work like that. It feels bad, yeah. The best way to improve it quickly is doing tactics. Why? Because what's the point of winning a chess game? How do you win a chess game? By checkmating your opponent, right? So either you can exchange all your pieces in the beginning and go to an end game and promote to a queen and then after 150 moves checkmate with a king and queen. Okay, you can do that. But what? If you just won the game in 20 moves. How not to be a pet, sorry, I don't know. Tactics is puzzles, exactly. So why is tactics so good for your chess improvement, for your fast chess improvement? While doing tactics, you reckon, you get position recognition, you get pattern recognition. So whenever you're gonna be in a position in a chess game, you're gonna spot the move fast. Like you're gonna be like, oh, this is this is checkmate. This is a checkmate pattern. It's gonna click in your head. Well, if you're not gonna be doing tactics, you're gonna need five minutes to figure out is that a checkmate pattern, is it not? Or you're not even gonna notice it, right? So, um, doing tactics improves your pattern recognition. Second, visualization. As you can see, you have to calculate a lot in advance. And for that, you need visualization. Whenever you're doing tactics, you're gonna be calculating a lot of moves. You're gonna be seeing what's opponent best defense. And it's gonna help you in your games as well. So here we have pattern recognition, visualization, and calculation. So basically, if you do tactics, this all can improve. Plus, not only that, you will play moves much quicker than usually. Because you will see, oh, I'm threatening that, I'm threatening to take a piece, I'm threatening checkmate, I'm threatening that, and you're gonna see that very fast. So you're gonna be playing faster, and your results will improve very fast. How many puzzles are we talking about? Um, depends how often do you train, who do you uh, work on chess, but sometimes five puzzles a day is enough. Of course, more, more is better. Or you can just say, I don't know, 20 puzzles a week, sometimes that is enough. No, so the thing is that, <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you a story. Chess, in chess, there are more possible positions than are atoms in the universe, which is a crazy, crazy, crazy number. And that means that there will you will never get the same position in your lifetime. Maybe at the beginning of the opening, but then after you're never gonna get the same game. You're never gonna have the same game in your lifetime. So that means you cannot learn everything. You cannot not learn every opening. You cannot learn every trick in the world. That's why pattern recognition is very important. So while you do tactics, you're gonna see, okay, first I have to check checks. Then I have to check the takings, then I have to check the attacks. So, while you're gonna be doing puzzles, it's gonna have so many beneficial effects, you're never gonna get that puzzle, the exact puzzle in the game, never. But what you will get is the same pattern. So, similar idea. That's what we want to learn, to get the idea of what is the good. Also, I recommend you that you analyze the game after you finish your game, because then you're gonna see if you missed a tactic, if you missed a pattern, and then you're gonna learn like that. So this is a very easy puzzle. We're starting with easy ones, that's how it goes. Whenever we get a position, 
it, if it's not tactical, like when you're playing a game, we never know if we have a win or if we don't have a win. Whenever you get a position in a chess game, first thing you check is which checks do you have and if they're good. So first we check the checks. Second, we, we check which pieces we can take. And third, we check if we can um, make a move that threatens something to our opponent. What time control do you suggest for improvement? I, if you want to improve in chess in general, I would go for rapid to classical games. Because Blitz is like, you, you don't learn much from Blitz, you just play moves. But if you want to really think, get deeper into chess, get to 10 minute games, get to 15 minutes games, get to 30 minutes games, or even longer. Increment is very good, I agree, increment is very good. Checks capture stress, exactly. These are the three things we're looking at when we're looking at a position. For example, we're looking at this position. And this is a very very easy. A easy puzzle. Why? Because we first let's look at all the checks. Bishop g5 is a good check. It's a check. What are the other checks? Queen g5, Queen h4, and there is another one. Yes, checks are before captures. This is a common mistake upon beginners, but that doesn't mean that you should play a check. No, no, no. That doesn't mean that you should play a check in instead of a capture. It just means that you should consider check before a capture before you consider a capture, if uh, you understand what I mean. Yes, and queen a3. So here we have four checks, right? Uh, yeah, queen g7, exactly. Queen g7 is a check as well, but it's not very logical. So we're gonna pin that out because we just lose the queen, right? So yeah, so now that we realize all the checks, we go over them. So for me, like, you see this bishop here, you see this queen here, you want to think, okay, I have to bring another piece on that side. And the problem is that you kind of forget to go to the other side of the board. But okay, let's go. If we go bishop g5, what does our opponent play? Knight f6 is the only move, right? There's no other moves. What do we do now? Takes, takes. Okay, we got a piece, perfect. But now we count the pieces. We are still a piece down, right? We're still a piece down. Um, here we have a win anyway, but... Uh, but uh, you know what I'm saying. So bishop g5 doesn't really bring us a great win. Queen g5 is another check. Again, the same move. But still, we're a piece down, right? We have to count the pieces. But okay, first we consider just the checks. We just consider them. So bishop g5, okay, it's a good check. Queen g5 is a good check. It's not a bad. We get a piece. Okay, whatever. Queen h4, it's also a good check, but it's the same as usual. And then we check queen a3. You just have to check like which check is good and then you have to check queen a3 But first you have to see that this is a check uh, Because sometimes like I said you forget about the side of the board But once you see it and you see oh wait does the this queen king in any squares? No, but can king also cover himself? No. Well, this is checkmate Yeah, you have to notice queen a3 even if you're gonna go bishop g5 knight f6 You still have to notice queen a3, right? So this is the trick. Yes, exactly. That's a mate. You totally miss that. And that's a common mistake. And that's why doing tactics is good as well. Like I said, you look at this side of the board. You always, because you have piece here, piece here, and you see bishop g5. Like you see, you see this is a check. And you're like, yes, let's bring more pieces. And you forget the king is vulnerable on all sides of the board. So yeah, queen a3 is move that you have to see that's why doing tactics is good because next time you're gonna get in similar positions you're gonna think okay okay not only i have checks here what if i have checks from the other side yes in blitz it's harder to miss but when you're gonna get in a more slower game that's gonna be better so yeah queen a3 here is the solution is checkmate and that's the goal of the game right to give a checkmate and to win the game and the quicker we give a checkmate better it is better then we're done like you know if we're gonna go bishop g5 and go knight f6 Yes, we checkmated, but okay, we struggled for one more move. So now that we came to this, that we solved this puzzle, we can move on to another one. Because I have some really hard puzzles as well. But first we're gonna try to go from easier to harder. So yeah, here, this is the position. Let me check if everything's correct. Seems like it's okay. Okay, so this is the second position of the day. Uh, first one was a bit easy because it was mate in one. It didn't need a lot of visualization, visualization. <laughs> but anytime you're doing a tactics or a puzzle, uh, you, or in a game, every time you're gonna be in a game, you're gonna be looking for more than one move ahead, right? You're gonna be 
visualizing what should you should do, what should your opponent do, then what should I do after that, right? In this position, let's count the pieces first. So we have two rooks, my opponent has two rooks, we have a knight, our opponent has a knight, we have bishop and bishop. Opponent has a bishop, but our opponent has a queen, and we don't, right? So if we just take the queen, we're a rook down. And basically, not only a rook down, we're gonna lose a piece as well. So this is not an option, right? And that's when checks come in handy. First, let's check which checks do we have. So we have the check on knight c5, right? We can do that. But is that checkmate? Yes, king cannot move. But queen can just take it. And then we are a piece down. Do we have a checkmating attack? Well, not really, no. I don't think we really do. So this is one check and the second check is rook c4, right? So now we start calculating. So rook c4, what's our opponent's move? So our opponent is in check. Can he put a piece in front of his king? No. So he king has to move. This is not an option, this is not an option, this is not an option, this is not an option. So the only option is king b3. Okay. So this is a bit harder than before. So we go rook c4, king has the only option, king b3. Again, we look for checks. Rook b8, he can just take our rook. Sorry, let me just change the music. So this is not an option. So our rook is attacked. So the moment we realize that after we take on c4 and king goes to b3, our rook is attacked. How do we look for checks? So if rook is attacked, we're gonna try to check and move. So king b4, we see king is in check, right? Rook c4, king b3. Are you following? Rook before, rook before, but then where does the king go? It goes to c2, right? It goes to c2. And if we're gonna try to give another check, he's gonna take our knight. And then with only two pieces, we're not gonna be checkmating. Rook before is not checkmate, yeah. So this, this rook before looks like a checkmate, but he has king c2. And yes, you need to see that. This is something you need to see. I know sometimes you blunder this stuff, but that's why we are here to improve our visualization, right? That's why, tact I'm telling you, that's why tactics is good because that's what you need in a chess game. You need visualization. So if I'm just gonna go rook c4 and king b3 here, I'm gonna see the position and I'm gonna know what is the right move now. Again, I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna be checking. But the trick is that you find the winning position from where we are right now. Okay, so now that we came here, rook c4, king b3, Knight c5, the first move. Okay, knight c5, the first move. Uh, king is in check. Yes, it cannot move anywhere, we agree. But queen c4, what you gonna do? Take back, and then I'm gonna take your bishop, and what you're gonna do then? Tripaloski. <laughs> so queen c rook, knight c5 cannot beat, right? Let's go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the solution, and you're gonna try to follow me, okay? Rook c4, king b3. Rook c3 check. Where does the king go? It cannot take because it's protected by bishop. So we have king here, rook c3. It cannot take because it's protected by bishop. It cannot take because it's protected by knight. It cannot go here because it's in check with bishop and rook. Where can it go? It cannot go here because of the pawn. So the only option for the king is to go back here. Are we right? King goes back here. Then I play rook a3. Check again, check. We're always checking. And wh where does the king go now? It cannot take because of the bishop. It cannot go here because of the rook. It cannot go here because of the pawn. It cannot go here because of the pawn. And it cannot take because it's protected by rook, right? And it's mate, exactly. So rook c4, king b3, rook c3, goes back, rook a3. Now, Try to visualize that. Nice made hard to see in the game. See, for me, it's not hard to see. Why? Because I did so many tactics in my life that this comes naturally. I see this position and I'm gonna be check, check, the king has no moves, checkmate, right? So you're natural. No, I had a lot of practice. I had a lot of practice, guys. I've been practicing chess for 13 years. Um, can we learn tech? We're not learning tactics, we're learning to visualize. Because guys, whenever you're gonna be doing tactics, you're gonna be like, okay, I just take, and, and what do I do here? Oh, okay, I just move. When you're calculating, that's not how you do it. 
you you do not play move by move you have to see a lot of moves ahead and that's how you're gonna become a better player you can't visualize unless you're drawing arrows that's why you need practice that's why you need practice so let's go check this 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 and this is checkmate so yeah and you have to see this from the beginning right you can't draw arrows over the board oh surprise surprise okay so now that we solve this puzzle we're gonna go for another one so like i said last time whenever we get to a position any position not tactical first you look at checks uh takings or how do you say and then threats so here first we look at checks yes yes so first we look at checks so first of all captures are not good <laughs> checks bishop g7 queen g7 okay the, these are the checks but do they do something so here i'm just gonna move because um for example check king goes here what do we do now oh you were not even thinking of queen g7 so first yeah we have two checks this and this here we don't have another check from the other side of the board as we can see the pawn is blocking so if we go bishop g7 again king is 7 right but okay just a question if it goes king g8 this is another trick that happens a lot in the position what is the best move here how do we mate we hope we're going to resign <laughs> exactly bishop h6 is not the wrong answer but did you think about rook g6 so whenever we're playing a game yes yes we win a queen we do we do but is this a checkmate because in this position we have a checkmate and usually isn't it better to checkmate in two moves than get a queen and win a game in 25 moves right okay so this is one check that's very good but how about bishop f6 the difference is that now the rook cannot cover right so king has to go here and this is checkmate bishop g7 we like it if king goes here right that's perfect we're gonna mate but what if king goes here how can you visualize 20 move you you should not visualize 20 move that's why we're here to start visualizing so we, we're gonna visualize one move two moves three moves and then it's just gonna improve right so what do we do now do we have a move we can go we can go for here but f6 what do we do now it looks like our opponent saved ourselves do you, do you agree with me do you agree that our opponent's king is not as at risk anymore who put that pawn there yeah do you agree that this is not what we wanted from the position black saved the king exactly black saved it now black is perfect so that's why bishop g7 is not great because we're we're gonna see even if we check here again same save right he can take but then if king goes here it's he's kind of safe like this song do we have any other checks not really right not really so in this position this position is different from others we checked which checks we have and we realized that the checks don't work for us so we check the checks now we check the takings what what pieces can we take can we take only one piece is that true but but that's not good good right because queen is our only the strongest attacking piece and we do not want to give it for rook what is the third thing we check third thing is threats can we make a move that threatens checkmate yes can we threaten a move that for example threatens checkmate or something right b5 threatens something i don't know does it so if you want to put the queen here can't it just rook block the check right so what threats can we make so this is the, a move this is a move that if you don't have an ex, ex, uh, enough experience i guess with tactics you will not see easily rook cd1 this is yeah this is a very slow move but what does it threat what does this move threat nothing much right so now i'm gonna tell you the move and it, i'm gonna draw it bishop f6 bishop f6 is the move what does this move threat what does what does this move threat tell me we take the we take the e7 square away from our opponent that we saw was critical we saw was critical right we saw that king escaped to e7 and saved and what do we threaten if opponent plays this we threaten queen g7 checkmate and actually the only move for black that it doesn't lose is taking the bishop and what happens then so is it it's very simple but this is a pattern that if you see it for the first time you're never gonna play it right so you have to 
see the pattern in tactics first that you're gonna be like oh my god bishop f6 there's a pin i take the queen and i'm i'm a queen up basically like and queen up we know how to win yeah we know that right <laughs> so yeah bishop f6 it's this is called a quiet move this move is i mean it's not really a quiet move it it it's kind of a move that you don't think of until you realize that rook is pinned and king goes to e7 this is the only square for example if you if we want to give space to the king like this this is still gonna be checkmate in the in the same way king cannot go to e7 that's his only solution right yeah yeah so there's a pin i know pins are it can be hard to recognize but again more pin tactics that we're gonna do easier we're gonna spot it we're gonna be in the game like oh this is a pin of course you cannot take like easier gg and this is all practice this is all practice you could yeah, yeah you you could you could play this but i'm not gonna take because if i take i'm gonna lose right if i take i'm gonna lose my queen in the future so if you take bishop f2 that's that that's trick i agree that is tricky so if you go bishop f2 i just go king h1 yeah i do agree that this is already a bit advanced but we're not we're not in a puzzle for this one yeah you're not in a puzzle for this one but yes you have to be careful about these checks as well so anytime you don't give a check you have to be careful of an opponent's check what's this tactic uh, pattern called uh well basically we're taking away the kings i don't know how it's called <laughs> but it's i would say it's taking advantage of the pin i think i would call it that taking advantage of the pin this one was not easy but see once you see it you're like ah okay something clicks in your mind right you're, you're like okay makes sense makes sense yeah it does, it does.